One of the things Nietzsche was brutally honest about was the fact that scientific atheism prevented man from having any real purpose in life. It simply doesn't present man with any reason to go on living. Welcome to the Monty Collier Report. I'm Monty Collier. I'd like to give you a big welcome from Northeast Tennessee. If you'd like to get a copy of my free theological journal, then send me an email to the email address that you see at the beginning of this video. I'll send one out to you free of charge. Many people who turn to a life of crime, a life of alcohol and drug abuse, a life of public debauchery, and many of those who come to commit suicide often share a common belief that their life is meaningless. Many of the men throughout history, men who have coldly committed the most despicable horrific acts ever recorded, were men who believed that life had no ultimate purpose, no point whatsoever. If there is no God, no salvation from sin, no coming judgment to render justice to all, no hope of eternal life, if men must live miserably, live wickedly, die, and cease to exist ever after, then what does it matter what one believes or how one lives? Many fools throughout history have walked along this evil philosophical path of despair. Some of these wicked individuals simply concluded, quote, Let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we shall die. End quote. Isaiah chapter 22, verse 13. Friedrich Nietzsche knew that scientific atheism necessarily leads its adherents to the conclusion that life has no purpose, no meaning, and no point. Many popular atheists today attempt to mask this despair in a number of ways. But like their philosophy, when it is all said and done, their feeble efforts are pointless. Despite the struggle of secular philosophers down through the ages, they all eventually feel the sting of death. In the end, it is the grave that has the victory over these secular philosophers, and their teachings as well. Death and the grave haunt these poor fools relentlessly, not only in academia, but in the deepest recesses of their mind. Nietzsche wrote, and I quote, an actual drawback which accompanies the cessation of metaphysical views lies in the fact that the individual looks upon his short span of life too exclusively and receives no stronger incentives to build durable institutions intended to last for centuries. End quote. Human, All to Human, Part 1, First Division, Section 22, page 28. Calvinism rejects the pessimistic and defeatist philosophy of scientific atheism, for we know the ultimate meaning of life. Quote, to glorify God and to enjoy Him forever. End quote. The Westminster Shorter Catechism, question and answer one. The Bible says, quote, Whether therefore ye eat or drink, or whatsoever ye do, do all to the glory of God. End quote. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 31. And again we read, quote, My flesh and my heart faileth, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. End quote. Psalm 73, verse 26. Christians are not terrorized by sin, death, or the grave, for the Bible says, quote, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. End quote. Romans chapter 5, verse 1. Christians have a persuasion not found in other men. The Bible says, and I quote, For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord, end quote. Romans chapter 8, verses 38 through 39. The profound optimism, comfort, peace, and confidence found even in the smallest Christian is something we should seriously contemplate. So important is this idea, and not just in trying times, that the Heidelberg Catechism immediately places it directly before our gaze. What is thy only comfort in life and death? That I with body and soul both in life and death, am not my own, but belong unto my faithful Savior, Jesus Christ, who with his precious blood hath fully satisfied for all of my sins, and delivered me from all the power of the devil, and so preserves me that without the will of my heavenly Father not a hair can fall from my head, yea, that all things must be subservient to my salvation, and therefore, by his Holy Spirit, he also assures me of eternal life, and makes me sincerely willing and ready henceforth to live unto him. The Heidelberg Catechism, Lord's Day 1, Question and Answer 1. Now a bit later, 
Unable to comfort his miserable soul, unable to defend his dreary atheistic existentialism, Nietzsche simply pretends he can banish both optimism and pessimism. Like a small child who covers his ears while having a fit, Nietzsche cries out the following, and I quote, Away with those wearisome, hackneyed terms, optimism and pessimism, for the occasion for using them becomes less and less from day to day. Only the chatterboxes still find them so absolutely necessary. End quote. Human All to Human, Part 1, First Division, Section 28, Page 31.